grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Gospel reading we just read, uh, where Jesus went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door. This is our text in the name of Jesus here, Christian friends. Strive to enter through the narrow door, Jesus says. This is the beginning of a parable that Jesus was telling on his way to Jerusalem, where he was striving to extend life to people on his cross. His strife on the cross would open the door. It would lead the way to eternal life for everyone who believed in him. Now you remember the words of Jesus. Jesus said it very clearly about himself. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father except through me. So in our text for this morning, we hear the parable of the door from the very door itself. The parable in our text is a parable about the kingdom of God. And it's kind of interesting to notice that the parables that Jesus told about the kingdom of God, they always seem to have two parts. The first part is to let us know that there really is a heaven and a hell. And the second part is to let us know that the way to heaven is only through the forgiveness of our sins which Jesus won for us on the cross. Now the idea of an afterlife is a very common thing in our world today. I mean, most people believe that there is some sort of life after death. Most people believe that there's a time of judgment after a death. Time where we go, as we say, to meet our Maker. But where most people believe in an afterlife, the differences really come in the details of how that afterlife is going to take place. And with that, we find that there are so many ideas in our world today about how you get to that afterlife. Some people believe that if you get it, don't get it right the first time in your life, then you come back lifetime after lifetime after lifetime in order to get it right. There are other people who simply believe that good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. And there's those who can't even stand the idea of an eternal punishment like hell, and so they believe that evil people simply cease to exist. But you know what Jesus taught us about the life after death? He made it very, very clear that there are only two places to go after death. He describes one as a place of a great heavenly party. He compares it, this place to a wedding reception, a coronation of a king or a great banquet. And he describes the other place as a place of eternal torment. He talks about a fire that will never go out. He talks about a worm that will never die and great darkness. And in our text for this morning, Jesus tells us about both of these places. He talks about reclining at a table at the kingdom of God and also about the torment of the kingdom of darkness where he says that they're going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but it doesn't sound good to me. Jesus made it very clear that there's a hell to be avoided, that there's a heaven that all of us want to go to. And so I guess the next question is kind of obvious. It's maybe even kind of logical. How can I be sure that I'm going to be in the kingdom of God? and not in the outer darkness? How can I be sure that I'm going to spend my eternity with my Savior Jesus in the glories of heaven? And you know, Jesus answers that question very clearly in our text. He says, strive to enter through the narrow door. You see, the door that he's talking about here is narrow. Why? Because it's the only way, there's only one way to get into the kingdom of heaven. Remember what Jesus said, I quoted it just a few moments ago. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, we have a real problem in our world today because it tries to tell us that there are many ways. 
that there are many doors into the kingdom of God. But Jesus tells us that he is the only way. In fact, he offers himself as the door into the kingdom of God. And I think that the saddest part of this parable in our text is that there are so many people who are waiting outside the door, and yet they're ignoring the door. They're, very, they're following the footsteps of the people of Noah's day. As Noah closed the door of the ark, and the water started collecting around the ankles of the people outside, they suddenly realized to their terror that they needed to be inside the ark. But then it was too late. So it is with many people today. Jesus has won their victory. He's won their victory. He's offered his gift of salvation to them totally free and without any cost. And yet they reject him and all that he offers. They're waiting at the door to the kingdom of God and they're watching that door close either because they don't believe what Jesus says or they don't have time for him right now in their lives. Well, eventually they're going to realize that they have missed the opportunity to be saved. And in terror, they may pay a pound on the door of the master, but the master won't let him in. You see, it's too late. Can you just imagine, for a moment, think about it in your mind, the terror of the people of Noah's day as they pounded on the outside of the ark, and yet the water kept rising and swept them off their feet to a certain death. How much more is the terror of these people today who are standing outside the narrow door as they realize that they're doomed to an eternity in hell? Do you know anyone who is facing that fate? Maybe a relative, a friend, a co-worker, a student? You know, the real tr sad tragedy in all of this is that the people are warned. The people are warned. The people themselves in our taps, they say, Lord Jesus, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. You know who these people are, don't you? These are the people who have been baptized. Many even, maybe right here in this congregation, but have rejected Jesus for the world and all the pleasures around them. These are the people who pass through their confirmation instruction, but they haven't been in worship. They haven't been in Bible study ever since. And so they've lost what they gained. These are the people who hear the word of God proclaimed maybe every week. Maybe right here in this place, but when it comes to repentance, when it comes to confessing their sins, they don't want any part of that. These are the people who eat and drink the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ himself, but they shrug it off. It's, it's just kind of something that we do here in church. So they eat and drink to their own damnation. What a tragic story for us. What a tragic story as we watch this happening sometimes don't do anything about it. Even praying or encouraging the people. I mean, if you know someone who's in this particular position, you can pray for them. You can ask the Holy Spirit to come into their life and renew their faith and strengthen them, encourage them. Of course, the good news in our text is that there's people who have listened to the voice of Jesus, the ones who are striving to enter through the narrow door. And Jesus calls them faithful believers. He talks about them as being the ones who are occupying the kingdom of heaven. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets, people from east and west and north and south, the scriptures tell us. These are the people who have been convicted of their sins through the power of the Holy Spirit and yet who struggle every day in repentance of those sins daily. These are the people who know that their sins have been washed away in the blood of the Lamb and who are brought to saving faith in Jesus Christ, who is the door through which you enter the gift of eternal life. These are the people who don't rely on who they are or how much they have, money they have or how what they have done in their life. Some of these people are going to be really surprised at who's going to be there in the kingdom of God. Remember that thief on the cross who was on the cross next to Jesus who 
knew nothing about the, about the gospel until he came into contact with Jesus at the end of his miserable life, that guy's going to be there. You remember Paul who persecuted the church and drug men, women, and children to, to their deaths until Jesus met him on the road to Damascus. That man's going to be there too. And how about that juvenile delinquent who was nothing but trouble when he was a kid, but then he got, to, he got into jail, and when he was brought to jail, he was brought to faith in Jesus by a volunteer at that jail? Yeah, he's going to be there too. You know who else is going to be there? You and me. You and me. We who sometimes try to cover up our sin instead of confessing that sin, who think that, that uh, we are oftentimes very good people are going to be there too. You see, you're here this morning and you're confessing your sin just like you did a few moments ago. And you're hearing your Lord tell you that you too are going to be there. What a blessed message this is for us to hear this morning. Unfortunately, there's also going to be some tragedies. Jesus also said, and some are first, who will be last? These tragedies will include the Jewish leaders, the ones who heard Moses and the prophets from the day that they were born till the day that they died, who met Jesus in the flesh, but who rejected him as their savior. This will include Judas, who walked and talked with Jesus throughout his entire earthly ministry. And yet, he, in the end, he rejected Jesus by his own in unbelief. Those tragedies will include popes and kings and uh, televangelists and famous pastors who believe that entertaining their congregation is much more important than giving them the truth of God's word and in his sacraments. Strive to enter through the narrow door, Jesus says. Jesus is the door. Jesus opened that door from the manger as he, as the Son of God, was born as a frail human being. Jesus opened the door on the road as he set his face toward Jerusalem, as we heard in our text for this morning, to teach about the kingdom of God. Jesus opened the door from the cross as he traded his perfect life for the death of, of our sin. And Jesus opened that door on that Sunday morning when he burst forth from his tomb and he declared his victory over sin and death and the devil. He is risen. Did you forget that already? Not too long ago, was it? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The door to the kingdom of heaven, it is open wide for all who are called to believe in Jesus as their Savior. But you know, you're going to tell me, no, I can't strive. No, I don't have the strength. And I'm going to say you're right. You don't. <laughs> Remember all the people Jesus healed during his ministry here on earth. None of them had the power or the strength to heal themselves. But through the power of Jesus' word, they became whole once again. I mean, think about when Jesus told the lame man to rise and take up your bed and walk. And the lame man stood up on his feet and he took up his bed and he walked. Just like Jesus said, the man didn't have that power of his own in himself. But on the command of Jesus, he was healed. And he was given the power to obey what Jesus told him to do. And when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. A dead man came out of the tomb, and we know that he didn't have the power to do that on his own. Well, that same word, that same word of God that healed the sick, raised the dead, and even spoke into the nothingness, all the creation of the world, he's, now, he's the one who is now speaking to you right now. Strive to enter through the narrow door. And with that command, you're also given the power to strive ahead in your Christian life, knowing that the blood of Jesus has cleansed you from all sin, and that right now you are starting all over again. See, unfortunately, that the day is coming. When Jesus, as Jesus rose to open the door, he's also going to rise among us to close the door. For some in this world, the door will close today. 
as they breathe their last breath. Maybe this is the last day for you and for me. Which door, which side of the door are you going to be on? Fortunately, the answer to that question really doesn't depend on you and me. I mean, how blessed we are that Jesus is our door, that Jesus saved us from everything that could ever tear us away from him, just as the saving work of Jesus extended back to the time of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets, it also extends forward today to you and me. As God's word and his sacraments were spread from Jerusalem to the east and to the west and the north and the south, and eventually it came down to you and me. And we have been promised through Jesus that we will be reclining at the table in the kingdom of God. So thanks be to the Father who gives us his kingdom. <laughs> thanks be to Jesus who strove to, uh, for us on the cross and opened the door through which we enter the kingdom of heaven. And thanks be to the Holy Spirit who enlightens us, who sanctifies us, who gives us the power to strive to enter through the narrow door. It's to our triune God that we give thanks this morning for the power and the strength that comes to us by our faith in the Lord Jesus, the narrow door to everlasting life. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now may